Welcome to Studio D in the Gaylord College of Journalism and Mass Communication on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. This is Sooner Sports Pad. And now here's your host, Jessica Cootie. Hi everyone and welcome to Sooner Sports Pad here inside Studio D. Here's what we've got coming up for you on tonight's show. She has been a leader for the OU women's basketball team since she stepped on campus here in Norman. Named to the All Big 12 first team as a junior last season. Oh, and she's married to OU quarterback Landry Jones. OU women's basketball senior guard and team captain Whitney Hand is here in Studio D. She'll join us live here in just a bit. We'll bring you the story on Sooner wide receiver Justin Brown, who transferred here to Oklahoma from Penn State for his senior season and our live studio audience will get involved in Sooner Sports Pad Face Off. But first, the Sooners picking up another Big 12 Conference win, avenging the 2011 loss to Baylor, defeating the Bears 42-34 here in Norman on Saturday. Let's check out some of the highlights from this one. In honor of Veterans Day, there was an F-16 flyover right before kickoff. First quarter on the Sooners opening drive. Landry Jones hits Brennan Clay who gets into the end zone. 7-0 OU. Clay following up his huge day against Iowa State with two touchdowns against the Bears. One receiving and this rushing touchdown right here that put the Sooners up 14-3. With under 20 seconds remaining in the first half, Landry Jones is going to throw deep down the right side. Justin Brown makes the catch, 35-yard touchdown pass from Jones to Brown. Second game in a row, the Sooners have scored fast and late in the first half. Sooners take a 28-17 lead to half. Damian Williams looking like his normal self coming off the ankle injury. This 17-yard touchdown run is his second score of the day. Williams finished with nearly 100 yards rushing and two touchdowns. How about one more highlight? Blake Bell picks up some great blocks right here, finds an opening, turns on the wheels, and he's gone. 55-yard touchdown run for the Belldozer. His team leading 10th touchdown of the season. Longest run by an OU quarterback in the Stoops era. Sooners hold off the Bears and win it 42-34. to so real great. You know, I've been getting treatment, you know, throughout the week and doing, you know, the, you know, the proper procedures, you know, to get right. And so coming to this game, you know, I, f I felt real good, you know, have my leg taped up, you know, everything felt great. One rushing, one receiving. How much fun is it when you get to do it both ways? I mean, that's what I got recruited for, and it's, it's fun to be able to go out there and be able to catch and run the ball and uh, to get in the end zone. I was fortunate enough to do so. It was awesome. It was, a, it was a rush, and it's really something I've dreamed of really my whole life, almost my whole life, uh, playing on that field. And I've played some, but it hasn't really been significant minutes and hasn't uh, definitely not starting. So it was really, really neat experience. And once I got the nerves calmed down, it went, went pretty easy. Next up, for the first time ever, the Sooners will make the trip to Morgantown, West Virginia to face the Mountaineers. Another big conference play for OU, who's still fighting to get into a BCS bowl game. The Mountaineers are looking to snap a four-game losing streak. An electric atmosphere is to be expected with a primetime kickoff on national television. Morgantown is known for its hostility, and despite the Mountaineers' recent struggles, the Sooners are very aware of the challenge that awaits them. Fast tempo team, you know, they like to score just like we do, like anybody. So, you know, we just got to, you know, keep up with them, you know, score score points. You know, they're a great team, so we just got to come out and excel. How excited are you guys for the challenge there in West Virginia? It's kind of a hostile environment. Oh, man, you know, and I know it's going to be cold. You know? <laughs> so, so that's one of the nitty gritty. So you guys going to be pounding, you know, guys going to get hurt. It's going to be cold. So I feel like, you know, it's going to be a great intense game. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited about that one. You guys excited? Yeah. <laughs> my co-host Matthew Fresquez is always back with us and Lauren Nevitt joins us again. Guys, basketball season is in full swing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Matthew, I know the women's basketball team has gotten off to a good start already. Why don't you tell us a little more about the men's? Well, to warm up for the season, they hosted the UCL Broncos. It's spelled Bronchos, but that's not important right now. That was Wednesday at the McCaslin Fieldhouse in an exhibition. Freshman Buddy Heald had a game-high 19 points, while junior transfer and pretty decent Pictionary player, if any of you guys remember last oh, yeah, week, Amat M. Bai had a game-high four blocks as well. Oklahoma rolled in this one to a 94 to 66 victory, but now onto the games that actually count. Sunday, the Sooner season opener. This one was at Lloyd Noble, and well, we're just going to start things off right here in the first. Cameron Clark throws it up. Oh. Yeah, Tyler Neal, oh, yeah. he's there to finish with the alley oop. On to the second, Osby cross court to Pledger. Right here, we go in Sizzler. We go in Sizzler. Why man can't jump any? No, okay. Well, that, he had a team high 15 points on the game. And then, of course, Oklahoma putting on the pressure. Cousins with the steal, lays it up. Viva La France! 
That's M by. He's from France. That's why. It's, okay. You guys are not on it today. Pick it up. It was a sweet dunk, though, nonetheless. Uh, the Sooners end up winning 85 to 51. Well, very nice. The number 12 Oklahoma women's basketball team had no problem taking their season opener when they claimed a 69 48 win over Creighton on Saturday. The Sooners shot 50% from the, from the three point line. Team scoring was led by preseason Big 12 teamer Aaron Ellenberg with a team high 19 points and senior Whitney Hand with 14. And junior Nicole She's Griffin here. showed off her She's improved here. mobility and successful jump hook. Up next, the Sooners host UCLA Wednesday, November 14th at the Lloyd Noble Center. Well, and you know, now we're looking at the men are 0 1, the women, women are 0 or 1 0. Sorry, 1 0. 1 0. I know, right? My bad. Watch my bad. It. Men Watch are 1 0. Women, women 1 0. It's early in the season, but. I mean, so. yeah, they're going to have some tough competition coming up in the Big 12, so we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I'm loving this basketball. I don't know about you guys, but I love, I love basketball. basketball. Yeah. All basketball. right, coming up next, Lauren and Drew, or my bad, Matthew. Lauren and Matthew oh. are going to face off. Studio. And a little bit later, Whitney Hand joins us live in studio. You'll want to stick around. We'll be right back right after this. doing and knows how to work her players. They have some strong veteran leaders in the backcourt like Whitney Han. Yeah. Stoops, you're my boy, but I gotta go, Bud Wilkinson. He implemented the play like a champion.
I'm James Fischilla, and you're watching Sooner Sports Pad. It was such a great shot by James, wasn't it? Welcome back to Sooner Sports Pad. It's now time for Face Off, and we're going to bring in the audience. They have some questions for Lauren and Matthew. They're going to debate, and then we're going to let the audience decide who wins it. This is Chris. He's been our MVP of the audience the past few I weeks. I love some Chris. So he's got I our first question. Chris, Chris is okay. awesome. All right, so the first question is about the women's basketball team. We know we've had some teams that go pretty far, Final Four, Elite Eight, but how far will this team go this year? Nicely done, Chris. That was well delivered. Okay, Matthew, I believe you are up first tonight, up even first. though you didn't win. Well, now here's Last the thing. Week. Okay, well, new host. Okay, anyway. Yeah, go, <laughs> go, go, go. Okay, sorry. Baylor right now is number one in the nation. They're unanimous number one. They get all of the 39 votes in the AP poll. So now you're looking at who's going to be number two in not only the nation, but possibly the Big 12. West Virginia is a good team, but that travel is going to wear on them. Texas has a new coach, a new system. I think that slows them down a little bit. And then you have Oklahoma. They have elite eight talent. No question about it. They're 11th in the nation right now. Aaron Ellenberg is a preseason Big 12 team member. And then, of course, you have the veteran leaders and the returning starters, Morgan Hook, Whitney Hand, she's right over there, Nicole, Nicole Griffin. That's going to play huge dividends in this. And if they can get on a roll and if they can get a favorable matchup in the tournament, they could go to the Final Four. Or all the way. There you go. Well, Sherry Cole knows what she's doing. She knows how to work her players. The OU basketball team has some strong veteran leaders, like you said, Whitney Hand, Aaron Ellenberg. So OU has a pretty solid team, but the field is too deep. <laughs> There's some really good teams that OU has to play against. So I'm predicting Oklahoma will at least make it to the Sweet 16. I don't know if they'll go further than that, but I know they'll at least make it there. <laughs> Just listen. <laughs> Obviously, Baylor is a big. Baylor doesn't like it at all. <laughs> Baylor is a big competitor, and obviously they have the infamous Brittany Griner. So we'll see how OU does from there. Okay. Okay. Topic number two is coming from Kim. Who has the better legacy, Bob Stoops or Bud Wilkinson? Nice question. Of course, Stoops just Stoops. passing Bud Wilkinson for all-time wins here at Oklahoma. Matthew? Stoops, you're my boy. Stoops is my boy. I love you. But I got to go with Bud Wilkinson. He implemented the play like a champion today sign, which Notre Dame stole from us. Come on, let's stop talking about that garbage. And he was 145, 29, and 4, which is a better winning percentage than Stoops has right now. He was 6 and 2 in bowl games. That was before we had 100 bowl games in a bowl season. Stoops, 7 and 6 in that, 7 and 6 in bowl games. Also, the infamous 47-game winning streak. Stoops had it himself. No one will ever pass that. I don't think they will either. And then, really, the only thing that matters is three national championships. Yeah. Trace. Yeah. All right. Well, Wilkinson may have set the standard, but Bob Stoops has brought it to a whole new level. He has Wilkinson did not play the teams that Bob Stoops has been playing. When he was hired in 1998, the Sooners had not had a winning record for five years. He got OU out of their rut, won the 2000 National Championship, and reached 100 victories before any or the fastest out of any other football coach in college history. And I don't know if you guys know this, but he just passed Wilkinson, Wilkinson's all-time wins with 146. And he's on the AT&T commercial. It's impressive. In case you haven't seen it. It's not his voice. And he's the only but guy that makes the visor look good. Wilkinson there was an AT&T. Was okay, his voice. Daniel has a third topic. All right. Uh, which stoops would you least want to enrage? Mike or Bob? Okay, Matthew. I'm going to go right now. I'm going to go. Got to move quick. Bob. Mike is scary, but you got to go Bob. Bob's the leader of the team. You can make Mike mad and you can still start. You make Bob mad, you're sitting on the bench. And then Bob has that, Bob has that, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed in you. And you never want to do that to a parent, to a coach, to anybody. And then, of course, you just have to look at the fact that everybody has to fear Bob, where just the defense has to fear Mike. All right, well, I'm going to go with Mike Stoops. He's a good defensive coordinator, but... He needs to learn how to keep his cool. <laughs> fiery red hair. Fiery red hair means a fiery personality. When he gets mad, you can tell he does not try to hide it. I know Stoops is an older sibling. He stays calm and collected. Mike Stoops is kind of the wild child. He goes crazy, so I would not want to make him mad. It's I've seen the him quiet screaming. Ones you have to worry about the screaming. quiet one snap. Would you let me finish my argument? Sorry. I just would not want him screaming at me personally. I think they're probably both mad at you two right no. now. No, okay. just <laughs> Let's ask Bobby, the audience who thought Matthew won tonight. Let's hear it. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. All right. That's All right. a long That's cheer. Winnie okay, Hand also thinks Lauren. I won, by the way. Oh, thank you. That's right. Uh, I think Matthew won this one tonight. Matthew, getting back in the win call. Back in the win call. Sorry. Okay, it's time for <laughs> our Sports Mad Play of the Week, and it is the Belldozer.
In the fourth quarter, Blake Bell getting some great blocks right here, Bell showing off run. his speed. Yes. Run, nice. Blake, run. 55-yard oh, nice. touchdown, the longest touchdown run by an OU quarterback since Eric Moore in 1997. Let's let the belldozer himself tell us about this one. That's a front. Did a great job. Uh, you know, backers and safeties all came down, and, and uh, Trey and Rip and Bronny and all those guys pulling around, you know, did a great job. And all I did was see the open, and all I had to do was get the end zone. Don't let anybody <laughs> catch you from behind. Tweet of the week comes Tweet from RJ of Young the week. at RJ underscore Young. Lon Kruger is talking to a few fans during practice. He's asking their thoughts about the team, giving them his take too. Surreal. Coach Kruger, great guy. We love him around here on Center Sports. Coach Pat, don't we? Love him. All right, coming up right after this break, we'll bring you the story of Sooner wide receiver Justin Brown. And a little later, Whitney Hand joins us live here in Studio D. Stick around. We'll be right back right after this. Special thanks to our Television Cornerstone partners, Chesapeake Energy, Windstar World Resorts, OU Outreach, OU Pres. Special thanks to our Television Cornerstone partners, Chesapeake Energy, Windstar World Resorts, OU Outreach, OU Presidents Associates, and the OU Alumni Association. Welcome back to Sooner Sports Pad. One of the Sooner's biggest playmakers this season was not even on the team's roster a month before the start of the season. Transi transitions can at times be difficult, but Justin Brown is making the most of his time here in an Oklahoma uniform. Matt McCulloch has his story. Norman, Oklahoma is over a thousand miles away from State College, Pennsylvania, but now the two places seem closer than ever. Oklahoma's wide receiver and prolific punt returner Justin Brown transferred from Penn State in the wake of a devastating scandal. He moved to the middle of the country to play one more year of college football. Brown chose Oklahoma for a very specific reason. The tradition, um, you know, I, I kind of was familiar a little bit with Oklahoma as I was growing up and just watching, you know, them play with all the great players they've had and the great season they've had. So, um, you know, when they started to contact me, uh, you know, that's what you know, caught my eye a little bit. Brown is now playing under Bob Stoops, who after the win against Baylor on Saturday, trails the only Sooner legend, Barry Switzer, for the most wins in school history. But Brown will never forget his former coach, the late Joe Paterno. Uh, you know, Joe Pye, you know, was a man that, you know, stood for a lot. You know, he, 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 he created, you know, that environment up there. You know, you, you can't think about Penn State, not even football, just Penn State University without thinking about Joe Paterno. So, um, to me, he was a man of a good character. Know, and, and he taught me a lot of life lessons. Since transferring, Brown has solidified himself as an electric punt returner and the Sooners' number two wide receiver. 
His punt return for a touchdown against Kansas on October 20th was the first since Ryan Broyles took one back in the Bedlam game against Oklahoma State in 2009. This season will end his college career. Even though he's only been with OU for one year, his teammates can't stop talking about how much he means to the squad. We're real close. You know, all his receivers actually was real close to each other. So, I, you know, I, I love Justin. He's been pretty special, especially uh, not just catching the ball, but in, the, in a part return game. He's been electric. I just, uh, just really blessed to have him and, and blessed to have him uh, for one year at this on this team. In his short time here, Justin Brown has made his mark at OU. His legacy isn't sealed yet, but a BCS Bowl victory would go a long way. Matt McCulloch, Sooner Sports Pad. Justin Brown. Thank you, Matt, for that. All right, OU soon, just listen up. It's time for Oklahoma Blood Institute's Bedlam Blood Battle. Text OBI Bedlam to 69302 for your chance to win an iPad. Donate blood this week, Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. at the ROTC Armory by the stadium. Help the Sooners win the Bedlam Blood Battle. Again, text OBI Bedlam to 69302 for your chance to win an iPad. All right, coming up right after this break, Whitney Hand joins us live here in Studio G. And Matthew has, of course, a challenge for her. And first quest for victory. You want to stick around. We'll be right back right after this. You're watching Senior Sports Pad, my favorite show on TV. Yes, hello. Tell Keep talking. I'm Whitney Hand, <laughs> and I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. And yeah, Boomer Sooner. One. Is that good? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sooner Sports Pad, the Chuck Taylors of sports shows. Yeah. Coach Kruger, that is so nice of you to say. Well, she was named to the All Big 12 team last season as a junior, has picked up numerous awards and accolades since she's been here. Head coach Sherry Cole says it, that she has the it factor. The team captain had 14 points and eight boards in the Sooner season opener against Creighton. She married Sooner quarterback Landry Jones this summer. Senior guard Whitney Hand is here in studio, and she's with Matthew and Lauren. Whitney, first of all, we just want to thank you for coming to our wonderful studio here. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's so fun. All right, now last season you were named to the All Big 12 team. What do these kind of honors mean to you? Um, I think it, it just it feels good, you know. I mean, you work so hard for something, and when you get awarded, you just feel appreciated, I guess. I mean, I think it's kind of human. It feels good. and um, But you could do it without your teammates. I mean, I think all of us really acknowledge that it's a complete team sport, and anytime anyone has success, it's obvious that it's the whole team that gets it. Well, Winnie, you're a red shirt senior. What kind of advantages does that give you this season? Um, as a red shirt senior, that means I had to sit out one year. In my sophomore year, I had to watch. Um, so I think me, it's just you learn so much watching and a lot more than you could on the floor, honestly. 
So um, just uh, as a mental aspect of the game, just getting to see, getting to understand kind of how my teammates work off the court, um, that's really helped me just as a leader and as a player. Now, right now, everybody has Baylor as number one in the nation, number one in the Big 12. <coughs> how does that motivate the team, if at all? It's really fun having them in our conference, honestly. I mean, when you get to play the best, you get to measure yourself against the best. So we get to see exactly who we are, um, and they're obviously really good. I mean, they deserve it. They, um, they're, they're incredible. And, you know, but any team can beat any team on any given night. And I think this group of girls that we have um, has the potential. And, you know, you don't have to beat them 10 out of 10 times. You know, you can beat them 1 out of 10, and that can mean a lot. Well, just for fun, now that you're married now, are there any annoying <laughs> habits of Landry's that you're trying to break? <laughs> um, <Slow down. laughs> I don't think anything I'm trying to break. I think we've kind of, we kind of labeled ourselves as I'm type A neurotic and he's type B, like very relaxed. And living together, you kind of realize like a lot of those things aren't true. Like he's real neurotic about some things. He's real particular. And, um, you know, some things I'm like, what is that? It's not a big deal. I'm kind of messier than I thought I was. And he's like a lot more organized than I thought he was. So little things like that. It's kind of fun. So it all works all out. Right, now yeah. I think Jessica has an audience question for we us. We do. Rodney has a question for Whitney. Um, Whitney, so what are your future plans after you finish playing basketball here? That's a really good question. Um, <laughs> you know, I've kind of, when people ask me that, I'm like, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it kind of thing. Um, our lives are about to get crazy in the next semester. So um, I really just, I'm trusting that God puts me exactly where I'm supposed to be. Um, basketball wise, I mean, we'll, again, we'll cross it when I get there. If I'm healthy, you know, if I get the opportunity to play, that would be so great. But if not, there's lots of things I want to do, so. Okay, Whitney, it's time for Fresh Quest for Victory. Matthew has a challenge for okay. you. Oh, Every man. week he has a challenge for student athletes that come into Studio D, but he's not doing so well. But Amon no, Mbai has a special message right for you, Matthew. All right. Thank you, man. Okay, there he is right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I heard it. I heard about okay. it. All right, here we go. Where am I? Okay. You want green or red? I'm going to go with red because that's red? OU colors. You want red because you're OU? Yep. Okay, well. Perfect. I mean, I thought I was OU, too. I'm going to let you go first. Ladies, okay. go first. Okay. Ladies, go first. Okay. Right. So so like, go. Yeah, like right here. Okay. Okay. You just throw from there. Okay. Let's go, Whitney. I'm not very good at this. It's fine. I'm just going <laughs> to shoot from the hip. That's where you hit. This is kind of low. Okay. 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 All right. Oh, man. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Matthew's not very good. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. It's like oh, I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right, here we go. Okay. I got to aim Ten. a little higher. All right. There you go. Nice. Nice. Double. Oh, it's double? Now it's tied? Yes. I don't like nice. this. Don't I don't up. like this pressure. game. Pressure. Pressure. Oh, right. Only four. It's four. Okay. <sighs> okay, here we go. All right. Oh, Very nice. Ten. Ten. <sighs> Don't miss. Lauren, I'm Don't sure miss. glad you know how to keep score oh, because I just won. I won. You almost took me off. Wait, I won. You I won. won. You won. What? Matt, I won. Oh, my God. I won. Matthew, I'm not giving you five. He practiced all day today. And I did Whitney not. Just oh, came I did in not. And just had a little Thank you very much. Oh, well, getting your first win, Matthew. How does it feel? Oh, my God. It feels amazing. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't won in forever. <laughs> I just want right. to Well, coming this up this moment. week on Sooner Sports TV, you want to be sure and check out Whitney and her Sooners on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. They're taking on UCLA inside of Lloyd Noble, the home opener. Whitney, yeah. you excited yeah. about that one? Yeah. Yeah. So go check her out. Then again on Sunday at 2 o'clock against St. Louis. Be sure to keep it right here on Sooner Sports TV for everything you want to know about everything in the world of Sooner Sports. That's all the time we have here on Sooner Sports. Pat, thank you so much to our live studio audience. Thank you so much to our crew. We've got a lot of students in here running cameras. They do a great, great, great job. Joe Duvall, thanks for all you do. We'll see you next time right here on Sooner Sports.
pretty good so far this year. Warren swings at the C struck. Nice escape down the left sideline. This is what he can do. That's what they need more of. They need somebody to make a play. Seastrunk with his quickness and Williams and then making a play on the football and did a great job and that's you know almost his third interception I mean that's three pass breakups but he's been in position to make interceptions on all three of those third and seven Baylor 0 for three on third down now they move Terrence Williams inside in the slot might be trying to get him the football Going deep. The catch is made. Baylor with a huge play. First down inside the Oklahoma 30. There, Sampson just single coverage out there with Julian Wilson. Julian Wilson just misplays the football. Norwood does a good job of coming back and making that play. Julian Wilson just overruns it. Empty backfield for Baylor. Great opportunity to get back in the game. Florence with a huge hole. A first down inside the 10 to the 5. What a great call by Baylor and a recognition by Nick Florence. And he doesn't run the ball an awfully lot, but he's very capable, as we saw. Oklahoma in man coverage and just boys the middle of the, of the field. He does the same thing and may score. Let's see the ruling on the play. Yes, touchdown, Baylor. Touchdown. Saying he got over, broke the plane of the end zone before the ball came out as he was stretching it out. But obviously they saw something in that Oklahoma defense. The last two plays, they were both, both quarterback draws, one for a long gain and the next one for a touchdown. Mike Stoops, who's furious, he wants them to at least check the replay. He's the defensive coordinator. The ruling on the field that the quarterback scored a touchdown prior to losing possession is under further review. Wow, it's Was gonna be he close. Over the plane. Yeah, it's gonna be close. As he starts to stretch out, he loses that football. I don't know if they, if he ever broke the plane with possession. The it, whole key, though, it seems like in this day and age, definitive. It's got to be indisputable. No question about it. And it was ruled a touchdown on the field, so they've got to have enough evidence to show that he never broke the plane of the end zone, or that he did. JC, that play though, is that the advantage of this dramatic spread where they were able to get the linebackers away from the middle, allowing Florence up the middle? It is, especially the way Oklahoma's playing defense is they're playing man to man all over the place. And so they're spread with those guys like you're talking about. And now that opens up a lot of running lanes for the quarterback draw. Obviously they recognized that and ran two quarterback draws and got to the end zone if this holds up. Let's take another look at See the it. alleged touchdown. And it's hard to tell where he was and where the ball was when the ball started to come out. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Must be definitive. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think because there wasn't a clear shot to show that that ball came out prior to him breaking the plane of the end zone. 
Now, I think if, if it would have been called the other way on the field, I think it would have stood that way as well. Bob Stoops knows that Baylor right back in this game. They were trailing by 11. The Sooners were dominating. But one huge throw from Florence to Norwood gave them a first down at the 30. And then, boom, two quick plays and runs by Florence. And Art Riles' team has cut it to 14 to 10. Wow. Finch and Clay for a chance for the return. They will get it up near the 30-yard line. Time for a Mazda game break. Let's check in with Kevin. 